welcome back to another episode of On Air with Rebecca. Okay, so I'm very excited and honored to have today's guest with us. He's a former high-ranking leader in the New Age movement, and he's the founder of Kingdom Business Ministries, and today he's gonna be sharing his testimony about being raised in the New Age movement, rising up through the ranks, becoming a prominent leader, only for Jesus to reveal himself miraculously to him and miraculously saving him. Joining us all the way from Calgary, Canada, welcome to the show, Alan Strudwick. Thank you for being here, sir. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited about it. I am so excited about this. I, you know, this was, we just launched this podcast and one of the first things I wanted to talk about was the new age. Um, John Paul Jackson, who was a spiritual mentor in my life, he was very passionate about this. He was, you know, a prophet and he saw how so many Christians were being deceived and were drawn into the new age movement because of the spiritual power. And he had an incredible ministry of just reaching out, going to new age festivals and all that kind of stuff. And what's kind of disconcerting and why I wanna talk about this is so much of the new age has permeated into the church and into culture that we don't even understand the roots of the deception behind it. And it's actually permeating our churches. So I thought no one better to talk to than you. So let's start at the beginning. Growing up, okay. tell us, you know, where you grew up and give us your story. Okay, well, I didn't grow up anything near a Christian home or any Christians that, um, you know, that could influence me in any way. I actually, when I was 11 years old, uh, my parents were into spiritualism and occultism and New Age Hinduism, a big smorgasbord of things. But um, when I was 11, I actually in the schoolyard went unconscious but had a vision of being in the future. Uh, you know, wearing business suits and being all, all professional. And then the interesting thing was when I woke up in the playground, I felt like I had come back into my younger body, that I had been, I had almost like, I didn't have words for it, but I had come back into my body. So for the next three days, I felt like I was this 50-year-old in an 11-year-old body. It was very strange and I had no grid for it. Um, then the next step after that is I moved in with my father at 13 and he he was very spiritual, as I said. He was also a very rich man. So he would fly, when we were living in Australia then, he would fly gurus, personal development people, new age leaders into Australia to run conferences. And then I would get to sit at their feet in our living room and hear this wisdom. And what happened is that um, one of the gurus that was there, who totally into Hindu faith, Hindu reincarnation, evolving your soul, he gave me an explanation. It was deception, but he gave me the explanation of what had happened to me when I was 11, that I was an evolving soul and I had a chance to go back and start again. In fact, um, the enemy always works on ego and my guru told me that I had been here as a lifetime as my soul for over 300,000 lifetimes. So that, that meant like I'm very evolved. And so he asked my parents if I could be an initiate under him. So at 13, I was an initiate under a Hindu guru. Do you think that he might have seen the call and anointing on your life and maybe wanted to hone in on that? Oh, definitely. I definitely know now that the enemy definitely sees things and knows things in that, in that realm of destinies and purposes on people. That's why he comes to deceive and create the delusion on people's lives. So definitely, um, I mean, I, I believe he was controlled by the enemy. And he definitely probably saw what was on my life that God had intended, but he came along to deceive me and to run me in a completely different direction. Absolutely. And you know, there's a lot of people who are drawn to the New Age movement who have that kind of spiritual gifting, prophetic gifting, and then they get sucked in. And one of the things I learned from John Paul is he said, you know, they have this gift from God and the gifts of God without reproach, but they'll tune into a different source. So a demonic source. So tell us, you're underneath these gurus, um, probably some of the best of the best, and you're getting all of this wisdom. What did they begin to teach you and what were things you began to practice? Well, in fact, they, their aim was to train me up so eventually I would be a leader and then spread their wisdom around the planet and around earth. But I, what I did is every year, the guru would spiritually initiate me with a Hindu Lord so you would take it on spiritually. It would evoke you or yoke into you. You would follow that Lord. And every year as my soul supposedly advanced is how 
I would receive another one and another one and another one. So I was the reason I was doing that was twofold. One, the belief in Hinduism is that you eventually can reincarnate and be spiritually evolved, that you don't need to come back to earth. You can then go off into the avatars and into the nirvana heaven. The second reason was that the more I evolved and the more Hindu lords I had invoked in me that ran my life, the more power I would have and the more I would be like a god and a, like almost self as a god and that I would then have more power to do the things that I needed to do. So after those initiations and the rituals involved in it, they then also taught me everything that existed and still exists around today, anything in New Age, anything to do with uh, Hinduism, anything to do with ancient uh, scripts or ancient techniques of things they taught me. So what's so crazy is I read that the first time you went through this ritual of the yoking, I believe you were 13, so you were very young. Um, can you yes. describe what that experience was like? Did the presence that came into you, would you say that was a demon? And did it feel evil at the time or did it just feel like power? Um, it didn't feel like evil because I, I didn't have a grid for evil. Um, in fact, most of everything I was involved with never believed that there was such a thing as an evil or a devil or an enemy. So it, was, it manifested in power. It manifested in power and also in wisdom. I would have um, those lords would visit me sometimes um, at different times in the day and they would like they'd look like light beings or um, spirit guide type things and they would give me wisdom of what I was to do and how I was to evolve. Um, and then I would use that, especially when I got older. So by the time I reached my mid-20s, I actually moved to LA to be closer to everything that was happening and left Australia. And what happened is they they then started to train me into doing even more spiritual things myself. So officially, I became a leader. I became almost to the point where I could be in the inner circle with the guru. But but more importantly, they trained me in certain practices to the point that I would reach a master level or a spiritual master level. So then I could go out and teach them. So it was all about power and it was all about um, even false healings would happen as well under under that banner. But we never... We never believed it was evil. We didn't. I never had a grid for that. I did everything according to my heart. I want my heart, and I believe that's how God created me, was to help transform lives and help people live a live a more sexual, happier life to do with God. But I'm not knowing that the enemy wanted to twist it, so that my heart that wanted to just help people and love them was just was deceived and delusioned over here with that deception so that I'd actually do the opposite. No, and that's actually one of the things I loved about your story is that you had this calling to help people and you even saw it when you were 11 years old and you had this vision from God, but it was ingrained in you, your calling and your purpose. And you were just walking it out the way you knew at the time, but you weren't, like you said, leading people and helping people even though that's what you thought you were doing because you were doing what you thought was right. And I, you tapped on something that was really important is, and I, I'm so glad you said it, is that in New Age, you are taught that there is no such thing as evil, which I didn't, I didn't even learn about that until today, um, which is kind of a very dangerous notion to believe in. And then also that these beings who came to you came to you as a figure of light. So you would think that these lords were good. Yeah, you would think that, but... They're not. <laughs> Would you say that the New Age movement has a strong influence in Hollywood, in L.A.? And how did you see that? Um, yes, definitely. In fact, um, in the organization under the guru that I was involved in, it was very secret. Uh, but we, we actually owned different things. We had universities that we owned, colleges, uh, medical centers, different places that behind the scenes we knew what was happening, but the public wouldn't. Um, even business consulting, those types of seminars, we would take all of the new age principles and take them into these companies. The, the interesting thing when you say Hollywood, we actually, and, and, they, and there's place, um, movements like Scientology and some of the others that are around today, we'll, we'll do that. We did the same. And then the back, to, probably this is in the early 90s, we actually had certain famous actors working with us PR-wise so that they, they'd be the head or the front of things that I was doing. Uh, I won't necessarily name them right now, but, but they actually were part of what we were doing. 
there's even a lady today that has a very famous newspaper that is, uh, I don't want to say too much, but she she was part of the whole movement and still is, um, that still exists today. So behind Hollywood, the actors, they, they, they know exactly what's going on. They know the plans that are going on. And that's another thing at some point, if you want me to get to that. But even some of the secret meetings that I got invited into, some of these people were there and, and they knew everything that was happening. And it's such a it's such a deception because after I finally got out and rescued of it, the interesting thing is I thought, why did why do people believe Hollywood actors who are paid millions of dollars to act? They're not telling the truth. They're acting and they're very good at it. Why does the public believe that? It's that's the ultimate. I still don't know that except for the, just the power of deception. That's actually a really good point, though, and I've never thought about it. If anyone could pull something off and be deceptive, it would be actors and actresses because that's what they do for a living. They put on a show. You know, one of the things I want to do on this podcast and I'm passionate about is the fact that so many Christians have good hearts and good intentions, but they're not aware that the devil is real or they're really not have a full understanding of spiritual warfare and the devil just can kind of kick them around and mess with them and tear their families apart. And I think Christians just sometimes blindly listen to or are blindly influenced like things like like Hollywood. And sometimes we don't realize who these people are working for and what we're allowing into our homes. So speak just a little bit to that. You know, I totally agree with you that, that deception is out there. Let me give you this example. In one of the secret meetings that we had, um, we talked about two things. One, we talked about the New World Order, which I can come back to later, and a One World Religion, and we discussed strategies of what's necessary for that. But the third thing, and this was something that was one of my assignments that was assigned to me, is that in the Hinduistic belief, when we believe that souls evolve, we actually were taught by our guru and believed that Christians were here for their first lifetime. They'd never been here before, and they were the reason for racism, and they were the re- for intolerance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was actually assigned as that throughout my the rest of my life, as I continued to do what I was doing, my job was to wean Christians away from the absolute, that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was resurrected, that he's taken back authority. My job was to wean them out of that so that they could evolve. So I, my heart was right. I thought what I believed was true that I was actually going to help them evolve better. But ultimately what I was doing under that deception was pulling them away from their faith. But I was I was trained in different manipulative narratives and, and linguistic programming and everything of how to train and pull a Christian or pull a person away from their faith so that in such time they will wean over a period of time and not even know they've weaned away from it. And it, unfortunately I was successful at it. And it's still happening today, some of the strategies that are in place. Yes, and this is why I want to talk about this kind of stuff. But I want to hit on a few of you that you list in your book. This is actually in Chapter 3. You list on different practices that you trained in and you completed. And obviously, I want to talk about all of them. Obviously, we can't. We can only tap on a few. I want to talk about meditation because I see that everywhere. And the Bible talks about meditation, but there is a huge difference between New Age meditation and biblical meditation. Can you speak to that? Yeah, very big difference. Biblical meditation is where I'm conscious and I'm focused on a scripture or the Word of God, and I'm and I'm thinking upon it. I'm thinking upon it. I'm thinking upon that. And I'm opening up actually my spirit, my mind, my soul. I'm opening up my, my, my will to that scripture, that teaching that, that God has brought forward. And, and, I'm, and I'm focused on it so that it can start to change my life. It can start to change the things that are happening, whether that's a focus on a scripture that, that brings healing or whatever it might be. So it's a very focused, conscious thing. Eastern meditation is totally the counterfeit. It's where we shut ourselves down. We shut down our intellect. We shut down our soul. We shut ourselves down and we go off into you know, um, different types of, um, how can I say it, probably different types of um, realms that we're not meant to be touching or going into. Um, now, w- now people sometimes come and argue with me. I don't know why. I mean, I, it's not as if I just wrote the books. I lived this. I, I worked for the enemy, so I understand his ways. Some people come to me and they say, oh, well, but, you know, Paul, uh, Peter fell into a trance. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it was led by God. It was a trance that came from God. 
Um, and if anything's from directly from God, then we're protected. But if we, as in us, that we're like the self out of our own soul, we end up ending up in places where God can't even help us, and there's such deception. So they're, they're very they're very different. And everything you study, if you if you wanted to, but everything you would study, and I did that back in the New Age about Eastern meditation. It's totally focused on Hindu or Buddhist gods and lords ruling your life versus the Lord. So as a Christian, if you start to do it, you're moving into the foreign practices that God warned the Old Testament people for over 250 times, stay away from the foreign practices. And that's exactly what they are. Yeah, foreign practices, false gods. And even when Peter fell into a trance, he wasn't seeking and experience, you know, we just seek God in His presence and then whatever happens, happens. There's a huge difference. Okay, psychic readings, because I still see advertisements for this online and everywhere. There's a movie coming out even right now where there's a psychic in it. And so I constantly see, you know, witchcraft in media being presented as normal. Yeah, which is part of the plan of the enemy to try and make it normal and wean everybody down to it, including Christians. But um, psychic reading is, is two things. It's, first of all, it's a counterfeit of prof- a prophecy, of the prophetic, whether that's words of wisdom, words of knowledge, what that might be, and the prophecy. But it's a direct counterfeit to it. As you said, uh, we, like we're spiritual beings. We seek a, a spiritual God. We, we, we're hunting for that, and um, Christians as well, and hunting for that supernatural. So if they're not taught how to understand God's gifts, which are, number one, led by the Spirit, not led by self. They're led by the Spirit. That's the main difference. But rather than focusing and seeking after those gifts to be proficient in them and to understand them, they just, they're just they lazy and they just seek something else. So they'll seek psychic stuff. And I know a lot of, lots of born-in Christians, even tongue-speaking Christians, will actually go and, and do psychic reading. I think, one, it's lazy. Second, they're a little deceived. And third, sometimes they don't like what the Holy Spirit is, is giving them. And so they seek a more, it's more a razzle-dazzle type thing, psychic stuff. For me personally, the difference, because we'll get to it, but when I got saved, I didn't know what the spirit was. I had to learn how to discern between an evil spirit and God's spirit, Holy Spirit. And for me, the difference in psychic, because I had a prophetic gift, and so I had a very high psychic gift, and the devil used it that way. But psychic is done by you. You think it's you which it's actually not. I found out afterwards it's not. It's actually the demonic realm speaking into you and giving you that wisdom to trick you or to deceive you and put a little bit of truth in there and then they lead you down a very bad path. Where God, it's the Holy Spirit that gives that gift and the prophetic brings victory, it brings it brings joy, it brings peace, it brings the fruits of that spirit. And so I now, when I prophesy or I get words of knowledge or whatever I do, it's for the encouragement of someone. It's to build them up. It's not about foretelling, you know, are you going to get married? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? So a psychic is dealing with the demonic realm where prophetic word is dealing with God's realm. Oh, that's such a good explanation. And when, exactly what you're saying, you do not want to give into a false prophecy given by a demon. You don't want to come into agreement with that being spoken over your life and believing and following that. You want to follow, like you said, the Holy Spirit. That's what makes us sons of God, those who are led by the Spirit of God. Exactly. Okay, so I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but I actually see this a lot on in millennial products. And I've seen... Uh, it talked about on social media and stuff, but is it Reiki? What is that? Oh, Reiki? Yeah. Reiki is a, I'll, I'll try and give you the reader's digest on it, but Reiki is a counterfeit of laying on of hands. It's um, The Bible talks about laying on of hands to heal the sick. Reiki is the exact uh, counterfeit of it. Um, <laughs> I, I do have resources on it, but basically what it is, is it's um, it was founded by a Japanese man many centuries ago that believe that there could be power. Um, he calls himself a Christian, so a lot of people will say, oh, Christians can do it as well. It's false. If you actually study enough or you go down far enough, it's not Christian at all. It has nothing to do with Christianity. But see, that's the problem. A lot of Christians don't discern in their spirit. They make decisions out of their soul. If they feel it feels good or I felt like that was great or I like doing that because it felt good, then they make a decision on that. But that's that's the dangerous part. 
we have to discern with our spirit, and even if we never know why, we stay away from it because God's warning us to stay away. So Reiki is a counterfeit of laying on of hands. Basically, you go through different courses to advance. You're taught how to lay hands on people with an energy going through, and you focus on different Japanese symbols, uh, uh, other Buddhist symbols, and different things. It's is very involved, but basically it's a counterfeit. The enemy will counterfeit anything from God because he wants to deceive and pull people away. That is so interesting. Every one of these things is just perverting what God has already done in trying to draw people away from him. That's just yeah. blowing my mind. Okay, so next is soul travel and astral traveling. Okay, well, ba basically what soul travel and astral traveling is that supposedly— what you do is you leave your body and your soul then travels in real time to other people or other places or, or whatever. But you do it supposedly, they, like a lot of New Age will call the spirit the soul. So they, their soul travels and it's just a, it, it's, it's demonic. Um, it's misleading. It takes people into a whole nother realm. I think that sometimes it's real and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a hypnotic state and sometimes it's a spiritual psychotic state that allows you to feel like something's happening, but it's not actually happening. Okay. And then two more, chakra healing, because I see stuff about chakras all the time. So I'm, I'm, I like you asking me these questions because I, I, I love being able to tell from the, where I was and where I am now. It's, it's, it, it constantly gives me that... Um, Spirit feeling of that good Jesus rescued me. Yes, amen. <laughs> From ancient Chinese Buddhism, Taoism, if you go back many centuries, even millennials, the the and even in Hinduism, the belief is that as a body we have energy centers, starting from our roof, the crown one, right down through, and they call them chakras. Um, some Chinese people will call them um, pressure points, but basically the chakras are called Hindu spiritual points where in the Hinduism, your, your whole aim is to spiritually evolve through the different chakras, through rituals, until you reach the count chakra, which is when you link with Brahman or Vishnu or Kali, the Hindu gods. Now, the interesting thing about that is that sometimes Christians and even people that do that stuff will say, it's okay because we have energy centers. Well, number one, we don't. We don't have energy centers. We have the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit we have. And then they'll say, but, it, but they use them. I've even heard Christians say they use their chakras to balance the spirit in them. And I go, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't need balancing. I'm sorry. That, that yin-yang symbol um, that, that exists, a balance between dark and good. My, my Holy Spirit does not need balancing. <laughs> he's part of God. He's, he's perfected. He he lives inside of me, and I don't need to balance him. I don't need to do rituals. But the deception, unfortunately, to Christians is that they feel something. Now, one of the beliefs, okay, one of the Hinduistic, and it's a very true thing, and I've seen it thousands of times, is they believe that a snake spirit called the Kundalini sits at the base of our brain and it needs to, at the base of our back and needs to be activated. Well, what it needs to, they believe it needs to be activated through the chakras. All right. Now, number one, it's demonic, and any time it's activated, you see the results of that in people. I was even just talking to someone the other day that needed a quick deliverance of it. Get, they didn't even know what they'd done, but all these things that started to happen to them straight after they were in a class and they did a breathing exercise to awaken it, and then their, their whole life was a mess. They were almost to the point of para, paraplegic. Um, because of that, that thing. It is demonic. It's wrong. You shouldn't even go near it. But I just thought I'd add that in. That That's what they try to do through the chakras, release the energy through so that you your spirit evolves. But it's, we Christians, we don't have that. We just have the Holy Spirit. Yes. When I first heard about that and I heard it was a snake at the base of the yes. back, I was like, of yes. all animals, it's a snake. I was like, if you need any more sign that this is not of God... Snake exactly. that you're allowing you to travel exactly. up. Oh, and I just really, I remember there's two more that I want to ask you about because you just you just reminded me, what is up, because I think it has to do with chakras, what is up with the obsession with like your third eye and your like pineal gland and all of that? Well, again, that's a chakra point before you hit the crown chakra. So that's a very strong, 
you know, energy point. And I've heard Christians say that, oh, they feel like, you know, God's been touching them with the third eye. And go, no, that's not God. And that's the other thing. People don't discern. I don't think they have strong relationships with the Holy Spirit or with God or with Jesus. So they're not, they're not discerning. They're, as I said, they're making, especially in this season, making a lot of decisions based on their soul and their feeling versus what's the Spirit saying. I had so many questions for Alan Strudwick that our conversation just kept going. This is only part one, so stay tuned for more compelling content to come. And thanks for watching today. Make sure to like, comment, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when new content drops. You can also follow me on Instagram at Rebecca Lamb Weiss.